good day to all of you. My name is Kate and I'm a senior nutritionist from the Singapore Heart Foundation. Today, I'm going to share with you everything that you need to know about sodium and blood pressure. Sodium and salt are often used interchangeably, but are they the same? Sodium is a compound that is found naturally in food or otherwise added during manufacturing in the form such as your salt, MSG or even baking soda. And because sodium increases our blood volume, excessive consumption of it could actually lead to high blood pressure. On the other hand, salt is a compound made out of sodium and chloride. For table salt, by weight, it contains 40% of sodium and 60% of chloride. And because salt is typically consumed in our diet, it is suggested that excessive consumption of salt will lead to high blood pressure. If you recall, when you are measuring your blood pressure, you will see two numbers. One is a number of a greater value, which is what we call as a systolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure refers to the blood pressure in the arteries when your heart beats. On the other hand, the other number, which is of a smaller value, refers to our diastolic pressure, which is the blood pressure in the arteries when our heart relaxes. A normal blood pressure reading is 130 over 80. However, if your blood pressure exceeds 130 over 80, most of the time, even at rest, you have to take precaution or even consult your doctor because you might be hypertensive, or otherwise known as high blood pressure. There are various risk factors for hypertension. For example, age. As we grow, our blood pressure will tend to increase as well. Family history, obesity, pre-existing health conditions such as kidney diseases or diabetes, and also unhealthy lifestyle such as being inactive, smoking or even unhealthy diet. In fact, it is evident that excessive consumption of salt, particularly for a prolonged period of time, can actually lead to hypertension. For good health, it is recommended that we should not consume more than 5 grams of salt per day or otherwise less than 1 teaspoon per day. Now, I'm going to share with you the amount of salt that we can be consuming in a typical day along with its impact on our blood pressure using these simple props over here. So for example, for breakfast, Usually, we'll enjoy our kaya butter toast along with our coffee and soft boiled eggs. Do you know, just a serving of kaya butter toast, which is two thin slices of bread along with kaya and butter, will contribute to around 1.5 gram of salt. And to me, that is very shocking because kaya butter toast doesn't taste salty at all. For lunch, usually we we'll prefer to go for rice dishes because they are much more filling and satisfying and just a simple plate of chicken rice without excessive dipping of the chilli sauce and dark soy sauce would contribute to around 3.2 grams of salt. For dinner, sometimes we like to go for options that are lighter for our palate, such as soupy dishes like our fishball noodle soup. Do you know, just a bowl of fishball noodles will actually contribute to around 7.3 grams of salt. And that is really shocking because a lot of us think that fishball noodle soup are actually healthier options for us. And the reason being is because a lot of salt, um, ikan bilis and even MSG are often being used to prepare the soup. And most importantly, in order for the fishball to have that desirable texture, which is what I like to call as QQ-ness, a lot of salt is actually required for us to actually prepare the fishball. Hence, in the day itself, just by consuming our kaya butter toast, chicken rice and fishball noodle soup, we'll be consuming around 12 grams of salt, which is around 240% of our recommended daily intake. Now, I'm going to share with you what would happen to our blood vessel using this prop over here if we are consuming this amount of salt for a prolonged period of time. Are you ready? Okay, 3, 2, 1, go. Okay. I know it looks a little bit of exaggeration, but this is something that could happen to us if we don't take care of our blood pressure. But don't worry, I'm going to share with you some tips that can actually help you to manage your blood pressure better. If you are dining out, although soupy dishes such as um, fishball noodle soup or even fish soup are healthier option due to its lower calorie content, minimize the consumption of the soup as it's typically concentrated with salt. Otherwise, Always ask for less sauce or gravy whenever it's applicable. Next, eating at home is definitely much more ideal as you can actually control the amount of salt that you add on to your dishes itself. 
If possible, always cook with lesser salt, sauces and seasoning powder where you can actually enhance the flavour of your food using herbs and spices. But of course, if you still prefer a little bit of saltiness in your food, you can actually still add a small amount of salt or otherwise replace it with lower sodium salt. Last but not least, for grocery shopping, always purchase fresh food and choose lesser processed food as it's typically higher in salt in order to preserve its shelf life and also to improve the taste as well. If you have to purchase processed food, choose those we have Healthier Choice logo, but remember to consume it in moderation. Aside from controlling your salt intake, it is ideal to consume a healthy balanced meal as it can help to promote heart health. For reference, you can actually use our SHF HeartSmart eating plate to eat a healthier meal. Lastly, it is recommended to have at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise in a week. Before I conclude today's session, I want to share with you three common myths which I came across. Firstly, it is often said that we need to consume more salt because we need sodium for our body function. But as you can see from the earlier demonstration, sodium can be easily obtained from the salt that we consume within a day. Therefore, you do not have to worry about it. Secondly, it is often said that sea salt, bamboo salt, and Himalaya salt, and other premium salt are better than the usual salt. Is that true? I would say not really, because all the salt will actually contain similar amount of sodium. And although some of it contains a little bit more nutrients than table salt, the amount of salt that we add during cooking are not significant. But if you prefer a healthier type of salt, you can always consider lower sodium salt, which is a healthier alternative at the same time, it helps to mimic some saltiness. And last but not least, it is often said that drinking more water after consuming salty food helps to flush out the salt. I hope it's true, but unfortunately, it doesn't. It only helps us to quench our thirst. I hope you enjoyed the nutrition talk. If you're interested to find out more about heart health information, hearty tips, and acid, please visit our National Heart Week World Heart Day Virtual 2020. Thank you.